Welcome to the Maverick Report, where we bring sports news to you. I'm Jet Nelson. And I'm Daniel Castagna. And I'm Jason Holly. This is the Maverick Report. Let's start off with a recap of some of sports' biggest matchups from this week. The number two Houston Cougars survived on the road against number 11 Baylor with an 82 to 76 score after overtime. Baylor came back in the second half from a 16 point deficit, but LJ Cryer led the scoring as Houston took back the lead in overtime. Both teams have four games left before March Madness. As the Dallas Stars travel east, they face the high ranking Carolina Hurricanes in the Eastern Conference. The first and second period was a physical matchup between both teams as they combined for four penalties. Dallas was the first on the board, even though Carolina outshot them 7-6 to six in the first 20 minutes. The Hurricanes responded with a goal to open the second period, but ultimately could not outshine the Stars. The Stars won 2-1 to one over Carolina. With this win, Dallas stays as one of the top contenders in the Western Conference. Over the weekend in the association, the struggling Bucks under new head coach Doc Rivers took on the Western Conference leading Timberwolves in Minnesota. Both teams felt each other out in the first half, with the T-Wolves taking the halftime advantage 57-51 behind 11 from the kill Alexander Walker. The second half was a much different story for the Bucks, as they came out on fire outscoring the T-Wolves 36-13 in the third quarter thanks to an offensive explosion by Giannis. The Bucks took the lead and never looked back as they stampeded past Minnesota 112-107. Giannis had 33 points and 13 boards. As the spring season continues, we dive into what's happening around the WAC Conference and UT Arlington Athletics. Inside UTA Sports begins now. As UTA Baseball underwent their first week at home, here's a recap of all the games. Last week, UT Baseball ended its first home game at Globe Life Field in, in a loss to Texas Tech with a final score of 13-1. The Red Raiders took over with a two-run double from Kevin Basil and two-run home run from Gavin Cash. UT was able to score one run from Garrison Berkeley RBI single to center field, then on Friday, Boston College flew in to take on the Mavs for a three-game series. The UTA took game one 11-6 with Zach Norris who threw 13 strikeouts over seven innings pitched. Then the Eagles won game two and three by leaving the Mavericks scoreless on Saturday and outscored UTA by nine runs in the series finale. Baseball now hits the road for a game against Sam Houston and a weekend series versus Lamar. Easy. I, uh, I just focus on attacking. We talked about that in the game plan. Just attacking the strike one, attacking with all four pitches, and just fill up the zone. So, yeah, once I got that going, I thought it was pretty easy. No, it means a lot. I think just leadership is a big thing. Growing in my leadership skills, I think that's just the biggest part. To follow UTA baseball, through the season, visit utamavs.com or follow them at utamavsbsb on Instagram. As the UTA men's and women's tennis season goes into full swing, let's take a look at hard-fought losses against Rice, SMU, and Wichita State. This week in women's tennis, they started with a great win over the Metroplex rival Dallas Baptist, 4-0. This, then that week, they take a turn as the Lady Mavs ran into the SMU Lady Mustangs, who had been struggling, coming into the matchup with the Mavs. The Lady Mavs dropped both games to SMU and Wichita State. As UTA men's tennis invited the Owls of Rice University for their season home opener, the team was inches away from the doubles point, but could not overcome Rice, losing two of three double matches. As for singles, UTA lost their first four matches by straight sets, but the last two matches were different. Thermano and Espinoza won both of their single matches with a tiebreaker as the men's tennis team finished with a high note, even though UTA lost against Rice 5-2. Men's tennis will be back home on March 2nd and 3rd to face Utah State and UTSA. And don't miss women's tennis March 6th and 8th to face UNT and UTSA as well. 
As UTA men's basketball has only one month left on regular season, here is a recap of both games against Southern Utah and Utah Tech. Arlington's men's basketball had a two-game homestead Thursday and Saturday. A sluggish start turned into a 15-point deficit against Southern Utah late at the half. UTA used a 27-9 run to take the lead and never looked back, winning 90-85. Philip Russell started the comeback, dropping 15 points in the first half. The Juwan Gordon capped off the comeback as a leading scorer with 23 points, 18 coming in the second half. Head coach KT Turner was unhappy with the team's flat-footed start. Um, yeah, I wasn't pleased at all with how we started the game. Uh, we had no energy. Uh, we weren't guarding. Um, I felt like we started turning around late in the second half. Uh, and then in the second half, I felt like we brought it. Slow starts was the theme for the men's match Saturday as they fell into an early hole being down as much as 13 points. They couldn't keep Utah Tech off the glass, creating too many second chance points. UTA intensified their physical play as things got chippy, finishing the half with a 27-14 run to tie. Utah couldn't stop the Mavs offense in the second half as the Mavs took a double digit lead and never relinquished it. Alan Mancia's The Mav Report. UTA men's basketball will be back home for the last time on March 7th against Cal Baptist. The regular season end of WAC basketball is just around the corner. Here's a look at the current standings of both men's and women's basketball in the WAC. UTA women's basketball split the road trip in Utah one game to one by defeating the Thunderbirds but falling to the Trailblazers. Stephen F. Austin and Cal Baptist each have a game against the Lopes and two losses for Grand Canyon could mean a new top team in the WAC conference. UTA is now fifth in the conference standings, which leads us to this question, Jason. Is there any chance UTA can defeat Cal Baptist? Well, it's all going to depend on how they play at home. The Mavs have been struggling all year on the road, but the home games, the crowd comes out, everybody plays live. Gia Adams, that's the one you got to look out for. She has a good game. Anything can happen. She's going to be the one that's going to carry the Mavs throughout the WAC conference and the rest of the season. So it's all on Gia's back. See how she can do it. UTA men's basketball clinched a spot in the WAC conference tournament after defeating Utah Tech 89-78. It was also the third straight win for the Mavs as Makai Williams and Phillip Russell each had over 20 points scored. UTA now heads on the road to Seattle and Utah Valley before senior day at home against Cal Baptist. What do you think about this scenario, Jason? This one is a little bit more tricky. The Mavs, just like the women, the men have been playing great at home. They struggled earlier on the, early on the year on the road. What was it? They were 0-9 on the road, and they finally won the last, three of the last four. The big key for the men, for the men, it's going to be their bench. The bench has been playing great, but games like Grand Canyon where they lost, the mm. bench came in, let them down. They need better play from the starters late in the game. Shamar's got to show up in the fourth, in the second half. Four or five minutes left, you get, you got to get big. You can't get small. The bench, just come out here and do what you can do. And see how the, how they, the bench can take them in. So, I think you're absolutely right, Jason. It's going to be tough coming down to that road trip at Seattle. I think that's where the Mavericks fall. But now over to you, Daniel. Do you feel like that they could come back in that matchup against Cal Baptist? I think they can with with all the impactful players like from Gordon, Russell, like, mm. and uh, Coroma, and mm. everyone, and Chapman. I think they have a strong chance of winning against Cal Baptist. But also, do you think the Mavs will defeat the Red, Red Hawks even though they're on a four-game streak? Yeah, I was kind of mentioning to it earlier, I think the Red Hawks are going to have a real good home advantage there against the Mavericks. UTA having to catch a flight for that one. So I think Seattle keeps it going, but I think UTA will be able to bounce back there against the Lancers. And do not go away. We still have a lot more to break down and discuss also, you don't want to miss our next game segment. Additionally, we talk about news around local professional sports. Stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages. STEM is everywhere, like here, behind the scenes of The Walking Dead. When we break down clothes, we tumble it with trisodium phosphate, rock salt, and dish detergent. We stitched together images of our model and created a 3D set that can be walked through in a VR headset. We're able to turn 12 walkers into a thousand walker board. STEM can create new worlds on and off the screen. What will you make with STEM? Get inspired at shecanstem.com. 
Welcome back to the Maverick Report, where we bring sports news to you. Student athletes are the core of every team, and we spotlight a student athlete who is a big performer and leader in our community. This week's UTA Spotlight is Camille Corona from UTA Softball. After four seasons at UT Austin, third baseman Camille Corona joined the Lady Mavs for her graduate season and is pursuing a Masters in Arts and Communication. Through 15 games, Camille has 16 hits and a 4-3-2 batting average, which both lead the team. Please welcome Camille Corona. Camille, I know it's been a while, but you come all the way from Austin now to Arlington. How has that transition been for you? You know, on top of just getting into a new community, getting into a new school with classes, just how has that transition been for you so far? Um, so far, it's been really great. My coaches and my teammates have been very welcoming and making sure I have everything I need. Um, Arlington is a great city right. and um, seems like a very tight-knit community, so it's been really good. And then now that UTA softball is getting the season underway, off to a little bit of a slower start, just what is the mindset throughout the team right now, just trying to keep heads up and focusing on the potential for the rest of the year? Yeah, so Coach has been really big on trusting the process. Right. Um, she's crafted together um, a schedule where we face a lot of top 25 teams and we're really getting experience. Um, and so we've just been trusting the process in that. Absolutely. you got to play those top teams in order to get to the top. I, I definitely That's agree right. with that strategy. Um, you currently lead the team with that previously mentioned 432 batting average and 16 hits. How does that experience and confidence at the plate really help you fit that role of a, a consistent bat for the team? Um, I think it comes from my teammates and my coaches. Um, coach Leilua, our hitting coach, she's been really awesome getting us prepared every week for what we're going to face. And then, of course, my teammates just always cheering me on. We always root for each other the best we can. So definitely comes from them. Absolutely. And then with the Burner Invitational coming up, is there anything the team is working on specifically in practice this week or just kind of business as usual? Um, again, just trusting the process. You know, um, we get in there, we hit off the machines. We have a lot of right. really tough practices, and uh, the coaches are just – telling us to just keep working hard and um, results will come. Absolutely. And then with the matchup coming up against Texas, your former team, are there any other emotions there besides just getting to reunite with friends and family? I think just the excitement. You know, right. my time at UT was incredible. Um, my family's from Austin, so I'll get to see them. I've coached um, some youth softball teams in the Austin area. And so I'm just really excited to see um, my former teammates and former coaches. Absolutely. And then knowing that you can perform well, you know, we already talked about all those stats with batting average and hits. Uh, you perform well on the field. When is the next goal for you, whether that's getting the team up to the next level or trying to perform at the highest level for you in your senior season? Um, a conference championship, definitely. Right. That's, um, that's been our team goal since day one, and that's what we want to do. So conference championship. Thank you, Camille, so much for joining us here on the Maverick Report. We wish you the most of luck this season. Thank you for having me. Camille Corona is not the only UTA athlete that we're spotlighting. Back on February 9th, Matt Troy Jakimboy broke the 23-year-old school record for the 5,000-meter indoor race by 40 seconds with a final time of 16 minutes, 13.81 seconds. Next up, UTA hosts the first outdoor competition of the season on March 7th and March 8th at Maverick Stadium. And in last week's matchup against Southern Utah, Aaron Cash was a big part of the comeback which started an eventual three-game winning streak. Cash put up 15 points with nine coming from the three-point range. Aaron and the Mavs have two road games left before coming home for senior day, March 7th. As college women basketball goes, Caitlin Clark just took the number one spot on, on the all-time scoring record in D1 basketball. What are your guys' thoughts about this achievement for, Kate, for Clark and how it impacts the landscape of women basketball? Oh, it's huge. Caitlin Clark is really just changing the game as a whole. In a, in a small town there in Iowa, too, it's just getting that national spotlight, putting it on women's basketball, you can't ask for much more than that. Yeah, I agree. With the hope of, of players like Caitlin Clark maybe helping the women's game grow, especially in the professional level, um, she's an idol that little girls would want to look up to, just like Brianna Stewart, just like Sabrina Inescu. Yeah, that's. Uh, I agree with all of your points. I believe that it's... She's helping spotlight the impact of women's sports, in particular women's basketball. Coming up, we'll take a look at the NBA scene and we'll close out with this week's predictions, so don't go away.
What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Professional sports evolves constantly. We discuss key topics around the local area. Our pro sports segment starts now. The International Cricket Council announced that Grand Prairie will host four matches for the ICC Men's T20 World Cups in the summer of 2024. What are your guys' thoughts about World, C World Cup cricket coming to the DFW area? I mean, it's just always good to add another sport here to our large array of sports that we already have. Grand Prairie is an area that could really use the attention, too. I think, you know, finding that population of people that are really interested in cricket, it's a, it's a good source to tap into. Yeah, like coming to, yeah, cricket is just a worldwide sport, and it's just good that it's coming into the U.S. and, and uh, coming into the DFW so uh, people know from this area that how big passionate cricket players are and how athletic they are. Yeah, with the, with the flux of, of variety we have here in the Metroplex, I think having cricket here for the World Cup is going to be a, a great way to branch out for new sports like you were saying. Uh, to learn more and stay up to date with the ICC Men's T20 World Cup, visit their website, ICCCricket.com, and make sure you check out your Texas Kings. Their season starts for cricket in April. Switching sports. All-Star Weekend for the NBA was a hit when they finally revealed the LED court for the dunk and three-point contest for the game. On the other hand, the game brought some unexpected backlash about competitiveness. With that being said, what are y'all's thoughts about what happened at the NBA All-Star Weekend? I, I just think that it shows, like, it shows how innovative they are with the LED court, but it also shows like the downfall that NBA can have with their players. I think I agree. It shows the downfall that the players, the 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 will to be better than your than your team, your teammates and your opponents. Everybody wants to be friends. Everybody wants to put up 200 points. Mm -hmm. That's great. Nobody wants to show that they're really here to win and not just make money. The highlight to me was Steph and Sabrina. That's something that everybody could get behind, but it also takes away from the fact that the game is moving farther and farther away from what it was. There's no big men in the paint. Nobody, no impressive dunks. Everything now is just a jump shot, which any kid can make. I think you're exactly right. It's supposed to be an all-star game, not just practice shooting around the floor. So NBA got some things to work on there. So now we bring up some notable and upcoming matches to wrap up the show, as well as our picks for them. The Dallas Mavericks started a four-game road trip against the Cleveland Cavaliers tomorrow and finish a trip at Boston who has the best record in the NBA. Do you think the Mavs can bounce back after the 22-point loss to the Pacers? I think that's just one of those matchups where it's the middle of the season, things get tough, you're dealing with some injuries. I think the Mavs can bounce back. It's going to be a tough road trip there. They're going to have to really rely on their depth. But I think when they get Kyrie and Luka out onto the floor, anything's possible. I agree. I, I think one thing that, that we take, take a, for granted is that Dallas had won seven in a row before dropping the game yesterday. The presence inside, they went and got Gafford for a reason, but Gafford and Lively still gave up a combined 23 to Miles Turner. Hmm. So the shows, size is always going to be a problem if you have your stars playing in the perimeter. Yeah, I, I believe if, uh, yeah, size does matter. But I think it just they just need to be determined and motivated within the game to overcome the challenges. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you think the score will be, though? That's the tricky part. Dallas doesn't like to have a low score there. I'll hang it around 130, 125. I think they keep it close, but Dallas is on top. I think Dallas can beat Cleveland. I couldn't, but the Boston one. Last time Boston played Dallas. They, they put a foot somewhere where the sun doesn't shine. I think that Dallas is coming back with revenge. Now, with a new squad, too, P.J. Washington's going to lock up Jay Tatum. 120-97, Mavs going to blow him out. Um, I think for, for the Cleveland Cavaliers game, I think the Dallas has a really good 
had like 75% chance of winning. So I'm probably going to guess 120, 100, and then for the Boston game, I think that's going to be a really e either statement win for the uh, for for Dallas. So I think, but I think that's also going to be a really close game with like maybe 190. Ooh, keeping it low. Got some defense in defense. on that one. So. That is going to do it for this edition of the Maverick Report. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a highlight again. I'm Jet. I'm Daniel. And I'm Jason. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next time on the Maverick Report.